Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at the benefits of using tables uh, when you're collating your data. And I was going to focus on two specific topics, well three I guess in total. So what we have is you can see we've got a basic table here uh, already set up with some uh, what five headers there. And the purpose of this is we want to uh, circulate this information around uh, maybe colleagues or other people uh, for them to populate this with the information that we require. In order to do so we have a couple of drop down lists we'd like to include. So for status, uh, you can see column F here, we've got a drop down so we want one of these three options to be available to us in the drop down and like so we've uh, assigned two, we're going to go one of these contacts so again that would be another drop down. And the third thing we're going to look at, well I guess they're, they're both drop down so it's the same thing really. And the third thing we want to do is include some conditional formatting for the status, uh, matching exactly as you can see here. Um, it's worth mentioning if you're going to be using your drop downs, you might want to, eat, well actually I'll touch on that as soon as we get into it uh, and that will probably become more clear then. Um, so like I said, the purpose of this is to be able to send, share this around with some colleagues so that they can populate this and share the information back to us. Uh, so what we have by starting, we've got this basic table here. What is, there's not a table, it's just basic. Uh, it looks made to look like a table, should we say. At the moment, if someone wants to populate this and we had the information to put in, we put in a date, maybe say the 1st of April. You could say the incident was a trip. Uh, and I'm just, I've used the word incident, uh, but I'm literally just making this up as I go along, just to give an example. Let's just move it to SF. Say the location was in London, and obviously we've got no drop down, so we'd have to do uh, round there, and status could be pending. So you've got to type everything in there um, to get the information in. If I now want to add a drop down for the assigned to, obviously we know how to do drop downs. Let's say I want to select four rows. If we go into data, uh, we go into validation, we missed it there. We go into a list, and then I can just select my source as being all these assigned to contacts like that. So quite simple to put that drop down list in there. And if you want to go in a bit more detail into drop down lists, you'll see the video uh, on our channel. I'll try and put a link to it on the screen now, but if you search our channel, you'll soon be able to find it. Um, so this is great, we've got a drop down list that allows us to select um, the individual required and likewise for status we can soon do exactly the same, so let's select the same four rows and go data validation, list, source and it's going to be this status here. So that works all for, well for us. The problem we have with this is if we were to populate some information and I'm just going to copy all of this what we've got here and let's say we've got uh, that, 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 all random information. So obviously no <laughs> no value in this detail population here at all. So that's all great for with our drop downs we've done there. But as soon as we then get down to this row eleven, we can see our drop downs are no longer available. Uh, and that's because obviously when you put the drop down in there, you have to define the number of rows or the range that you want that um, drop down to be applied to. Alternatively, what you could do when selecting your drop down uh, or adding your data validation is you could select the whole column. What would mean the whole column would then be populated with these drop downs. Uh, so we can just see what that looks like here. So let's just do that. Yep, select that range and go OK. So obviously, now if you want to do this drop down, you can see it's, ev it's literally everywhere in that column. What well, isn't ideal and it doesn't really look too professional if you're recirculating this form with people, so I'll avoid that one. So let's just clear all these. So your other option is you have to select a larger range that you know people might populate up to. And a way you could do that is you might want to use some formatting and just to say, okay, for this area here, I'm not going to have any background or no fill. Oh, if I uh, actually let's change that. Let's say we want to have some grid lines on here, so border, let's do a light thing here. I'm being way too detailed with this, so I don't need to be. So you can just see that I've put, hopefully you can see that on the screen, I've just put some cell borders on here. So you could say your predefined area, data validation, list. Sorry, I'm, it must be getting really boring, but you're probably getting very used to how to do this if you weren't familiar with data validation before. So by doing this defined range, you can see it, it kind of looks clear that if you move out of this area, then 
the formatting is not going to be there. But still, it's not ideal. Uh, and as people are populating this, it's, you don't want to be going backwards and forwards or trying to explain to people how to incorporate these drop downs. Uh, alternatively, it's just, it's just not professional and not how we really want to work with it. So the better solution to this, and I've used that example for the assigned to column E column, it, but it applies exactly the same for the status drop down. And lastly, the conditional formatting aspect of this works exactly the same. So again, if you're not familiar with conditional formatting of how you can have uh, particular cells automatically change their color, as you can see here. So automatically pending would go to orange, approved would go to green. You can find that video on our channel as well. Once again, I'll try and link that on the video screen somewhere now. Uh, but if not, let's say, just go onto our channel, you'll soon be able to find it on there. So for conditional formatting, again, you need to select or predefine the range that you want that uh, formatting to apply to. With data that's going to be growing and ever changing, again, it's not ideal again. So the solution I have for it is to start using tables. And if you're not familiar with using tables, I'll do a quick sort of introduction on basically how you insert a table and how you can format it. Um, but there's not really too much you really need to uh, cover. Uh, the main importance of this is just showing you how using drop downs and conditional formatting with tables is a really good and slick way of working when it comes to like obviously populating information or especially when you'll be sharing that file for it to be grown uh, by more and more people adding their information to it. So what we'll do is we'll just remove this formatting that I've got here. All we can simply do is to go no borders, remove the information I've got here, and I think there's some drop downs there, so let's just quickly remove those. And go clear all. Cool, so we've got a complete fresh. What I will do is I will just add, manually add this in, well no I won't manually add it all in, I'll just put some starting information. 1st of April 2020, incident was a trip and the location was in London. Okay, so you can see at the moment and the clear giveaway that there's not a table here is pretty much the formatting uh, that you'll see. In order to insert a table or convert your existing information, which is this one row here, into a table, all we need to do is select your header row and your rows of data. And you could have more rows than of data here if applicable. But I always find personally it's helpful to put start doing your first row and then you can easily see uh, where you need to enter information from. Having said that, what I will do is just go back on what I've just done, remove this row just so you can see what it looks like. So let's just select this first header row here and we'll go to insert, select table. And you can see it's highlighted our range there and we've got this little pop-up here. And it's just identifying to us this, this is the row of information that we currently have selected. Just need to select this tick box here to say that your table has headers or the only row I've set at the moment is headers. And what that will do is we'll just say, okay, the first row of this range is your header row. Select okay. And you can see via formatting, we have now got a table inserted here for us. I will stick with that formatting for now just because it makes it nice and clear on the page but I'll show you how you can either remove the formatting all completely or how you can change it to suit what your preference is. So what we can now do when it comes to populating our status and our contacts is we can actually assign it to a column within this, um, within this table. And in order to do so, all we need to do is if you hover above the column what you are desired for, so for me it's assigned to, just above the header, you'll see the arrow goes to this black down arrow. So you can obviously see how it's normally. And just as you get to that top line there, it'll go to that. If you select that, what it's actually done, even though it's only selected one cell for me here, is it's actually selected the whole column. But all I need to do is go into data, data validation. And I can go into list, select my assigned to list. So there's those there and go OK. And you can see there's now a drop down available to me there, as required. Likewise, if we go to status and do that back arrow again, and this time go data validation, and this time I go list, source is status. Okay, you can see we've also now got a status column there as well. Perfect. And if I was to click above the table, obviously there's no drop down there. And if I was to click below the table, again, you'll see there is no drop down available to us. So we'll start populating, we'll go 1st April 2020 again, the incident was a trip, the location was in London, and it's assigned to, uh, let's say, 
Jill Peters, and the status is pending. Perfect, so that's given us what we need. But I now want to add another row of information. So now I go and do 2nd of April 2020. This time it was, and you can see upon entering a new piece of information in the row below, it's Excel has already identified that our table has now grown, and you can see slightly different formatting, it's now white line, but you can see this bottom corner, the blue bit there, has extended down to show you that our table now contains two rows of information. So instead of trip, we're going to call it a fall. And let's say this is in Edinburgh. And let's assign, ah, and I've just now jumped across without even thinking. You can see that our because our table has now extended, so has these parameters. So we've now got a drop down available to us here as well. So we've got Tim Smith. And also the status we can see is there ready for us as well. So the real benefit and what I'm getting a roundabout way is by assigning your drop downs to a particular column within the table. It just means that those drop downs are only going to be visible for applicable data. And by that, I mean, obviously, if you put data, anything down here, there's not going to be any drop downs. The drop downs will only appear within your desired uh, column. So that is the crux of obviously how to use the drop downs. When it comes to using the conditional formatting, it works exactly the same, except for obviously we're going to be dealing with conditional formatting. So I'll uh, go to my home tab. I'm just going to select the status column by getting the black arrow there. I'm going to go to conditional formatting. I'm then going to go to a new rule. Uh, then let's go only for cells that contain, specific text containing, and let's say my first one is pending. I want that to go to orange. Okay. And then I can do, you can see it's already updated there now. Let's go new rule. Let's go only cells that contain specific text containing, I can't remember what the other ones are now, approved. And this one was green. Okay. And then the last one was going to be cancelled. So specific text containing cancelled. And that was red. Okay. So we've just now applied our conditional formatting, although I went through that really quickly. You can watch the video back again just to see how I was doing it. Alternatively, kind of if I mentioned it for conditional formatting already, but again, you'll see there's videos on our channel going over in more detail how to work with conditional formatting. So we can now see if we were to change any one of these statuses, so that one goes to cancelled, the conditional formatting is automatically going to update for us. And once again, if I was to type cancelled below the table, it's not going to do anything because the conditional formatting only applies to the column uh, within our table. And we'll just add one more piece of information, 2020. And um, what could the incident be here? Trip, fall, I don't know, go trip again for lack of uh, lack of ideas. Um, let's say it's in Bristol. I'm just putting city, random cities on top of my head here in the UK. Sign to um, Joe Wright. And let's say this one is pending just so we've got all of them. You can see it's now updated there as well. So this is a really useful way of collating data and ensuring that your drop downs are obviously being enforced uh, where applicable. And it just keeps everything tidy as well and together. And alternatively, if you want to, when you're working with tables, if you do need to remove any rows, all you simply need to do is right click the row, go down to delete, delete table rows, and it's going to update that for you and obviously remove any drop downs and conditional formatting there as well. So it just gives you the flexibility uh, when working with the information as well. Uh, I did say I was going to quickly show you how to deal with formatting in the table. So as long as you're selected within the table, you'll notice you get this new tab at the top here called table design. If you select table design and then you can see you've got some table styles over the side here. So what you can do is do this drop down and you'll see all the available options. If you don't want any formatting at all, you can select this top left one here and it goes back to a sort of format looking like I had to start with. Or if you hover over any of these different options, you can see all the formats that you want or, or that you can have. And as soon as you see one that you like, all you need to do is select that and it will apply that format for you. I'm just going to stick with light. So if I select light, you can see it doesn't look like there's a table going on there at all. So it's a really nice one to work with. Uh, you only know you're in a table really when you select into the range you'll see this table design tab come at the top here and also when you're not selected in the table or when you are 
If you see the very bottom right hand corner, uh, there's this blue triangle just in that corner of the approved one there. It's just, oh no, I've made it hide now. Just here somewhere. Uh, you'll see there's that blue triangle what again indicates the range of the table. So it's going to show you the bottom right hand corner of that table range. Uh, and there's other benefits again of using tables uh, when it comes to working with charts or pivot tables. Uh, it allows you to reference a table to pull data in rather than having to set your defined range. Uh, so again, that's another little uh, reason of why it's beneficial to use tables. And also, if you're going to be using uh, data that obviously has a lot more columns than just the five I've got here, again, a table is a really nice way to keep it all together and nicely formatted as well. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, if you could give the video a like, it's going to be greatly appreciated by me because it also shows the content that you'd like to see more of. And most importantly, again, it really helps that YouTube algorithm as well for promoting the channel. If it's the first time you've seen one of the videos or you're a return visitor, please do subscribe. Uh, make sure you hit that bell notification button as well so you're notified of all of our future videos. Um, last thing to say is thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.